We were actually looking at patient and physician perception of oral mucositis. Uh, and this was a survey done in six countries in Asia. So Malaysia, Singapore, Taiwan, Korea, um, the Philippines, uh, and Saudi Arabia. Uh, and what we looked at is we interviewed patients who suffered from oral mucositis, as well as their clinicians. Uh, and what the study shows, which are a huge misalignment. So there are a few things the study shows. The first is uh, there's a very poor prevention and prophylaxis of oral mucositis. So very few doctors actually prescribe medications to stop this condition developing at the start of cancer treatment. Uh, the second thing it shows is there's a very poor early detection. So often the patients uh, reach a very severe form of oral mucositis before action is taken. The third thing that the study shows is that there is a huge misalignment between what uh, patients think is important and what physicians think is important, uh, which is very interesting. The study brought out a lot of those. And finally, there was a general perception amongst the physicians that there, were, uh, there was a lack of effective remedies for this condition. Certainly in our Asian context, there are two major unmet needs. So the, the first thing is actually getting physicians and uh, patients to recognize the problem early on. Because we all know that if intervention is started early on, then you get better outcomes and there's no delay in cancer treatment. But the second uh, very important unmet need is that there's a lack of uh, effective remedies. So in terms of treatments, uh, both uh, to prevent oral mucositis as well as to treat the condition when it occurs. So interestingly, it'd be nice to say that I've discovered the wonder drug that's going to cure it all. But I think the most interesting approach is actually developing a patient screener or an in-clinic tool which allows the patient and the physician to firstly recognize the problem early on and start intervention. Now there are obviously products that are being developed uh, to help with this condition. They're all uh, in early stages and some of the clinical evidence is not there to support them strongly in terms of the guidelines, but they will be available in years to come. Basically, uh, virtually all patients who receive radiotherapy or chemotherapy for head and neck cancer will develop oral mucositis. In the Southeast Asian context, we see a, a condition called nasopharyngeal carcinoma or nose cancer. And in that condition, the treatment, we see the more severe forms of oral mucositis. So I think in terms of my own clinical practice and the practice in Asia, it's really uh, the, the prophylaxis. So essentially starting patients on medications right at the onset of treatment and getting in the basic oral care and hygiene done before treatment is started. The particular intervention that we are looking at is uh, something called povidone iodine, which is a mouthwash. Uh, there is good evidence that povidone iodine has an anti-inflammatory and an antimicrobial effect. It works against a lot of viruses, uh, including things like Ebola and SARS. It also has a very good effect against fungi, so most of the fungal causes. And so we see it as something that has promise in offering some sort of preventative as well as therapeutic effect in oral mucositis. The first conclusion is obviously for oral mucositis, it's all about early uh, recognition and prophylaxis. But the other conclusion is that we do need uh, very good, strong trials to compare the different products that they are available uh, so that patients and physicians can actually receive some sort of guidance in terms of what is the best treatment.